Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this video, we are going to explore the first derivative test, which is a method for figuring out whether a particular point is a local minimum or perhaps a local maximum of a function. So in order to do that, we are going to take our function that we're given here, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 5, and we are going to find its first derivative. So the first derivative here, just using the good old power rule on each of these components, we will have a 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 as I go through and find the derivative of each of these terms. Now, just a reminder, the derivative of 5 is just 0, so we don't have to worry about that part here. But I have a new function, the derivative function. Now, as we saw in Desmos, we are essentially looking for the place where the slope of the tangent line is in fact zero. Because when it is zero, I have a perfectly horizontal line at that location, wherever that might be. So algebraically, what we will do is we will set this first derivative to zero, solve then for all of the x values, however many they are. So we're gonna let f prime of x actually be zero, set that to the derivative here, 3x squared minus 12x plus nine, and then now we need to solve for x. Well, I notice that on the right-hand side, we have a quadratic function, quadratic equation here. So there's various methods for solving quadratics. You could factor, you could use completing the square, or you could use the quadratic formula. Whichever one of those methods works for you will work here, except not everything in the world is factorable. So always you could use the quadratic formula or even completing the square to achieve that. In this case though, it turns out this is nice and factorable. So here's my approach. I will, first I recognize that I have a common factor that can be pulled out. That'll help my factoring work here a little bit. So I see that there's a three that's a common multiple throughout. I'm gonna pull that factor out in front and what's left is my x squared minus my 4x plus a 3. Now what's remaining in the parentheses is something I can factor itself, and I will do so into two um, binomials. So I have 0 equals 3 times two binomials here. What's in the binomial? So the first one I factor x squared, it factors into x and x. I factor three, factors of three are just three and one, but I need a combination such that when I um, foil this out, I end up with a negative four X here as a middle term. Well, if I put a negative here and a negative here for subtracting those, I think I've achieved that. And we will just double check to make sure all works out when I multiply and distribute. So X times X, X squared, then I have my negative one X, a negative three X, that sums up to be a negative 4x, and then negative 1 times a, or negative 3 times a negative 1, positive 3 when I multiply. Of course, I still have the 3 on the outside. So I have done my factoring work great. Now what I need to do is set each one of those binomials to 0. We're using actually something called the zero product property to be able to do this. So we don't need to solve for 3 because there's no x value here. 3 is just 3. You don't have to worry about that. But here there's an unknown of x in this. So we will take our x minus three and set that to zero. And we will do the very same thing with x minus one and set to zero. So I'll solve for both of those linear equations. In this case, x is three. And in the other case, x is equal to one. Now here's what we know. We know that at x equals one and x equals three, these are what we're gonna call possible critical values. These are possible critical values where one of them may or may not be a maximum, one may or may not be a minimum. It just depends, but we have to figure out what's what. So the follow-up to this is to do what we call a sign chart. All right, so here's what a sign chart will look like. We first start with our number line, say from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we're going to put these possible critical values on that number line in their appropriate position. So uh, here, say, is 1, and over here is 3. And I have to order them appropriately for the number line. And again, these are just 
possible critical values. And what I'm interested in here is exploring in the intervals here to the left of one, in between one and three, and then beyond three, whether or not the derivative is positive or whether it is negative. So that's what I'm looking for in the sign chart work, okay? So I'm gonna pick some test points. How about we pick like uh, maybe zero here. So zero in this location is any interval between negative infinity and one, awesome. Uh, a point between or value between one and three is maybe two. You can pick whatever you want so long as it's in that interval. And then above three, how about five? Okay, so those values zero, two, and five are just points I've just picked out of, out of the air, values I've picked out of the air to explore whether or not in this particular interval, the derivative is positive or negative, same for this interval, same for this interval. So what I will do, the approach here is I will take each one of those test values and I will actually substitute them in for X in my derivative that's here and determine positive or negative. So I have, f prime of zero is equal to, I just need to evaluate my derivative at zero. So we have three times zero squared minus 12 times zero plus nine. I don't really care at all what the actual value is. I just wanna know positive or negative. So when I look here, this of course is zero, this here is zero, I'm left with a positive nine. The important part is that it in fact is positive. And if you go back to the graph from the last video, again, you will have noticed that in this interval between negative infinity and one, the slope of the tangent line along that entire interval is in fact positive. And so the sign chart confirms that as well. And I continue on, I need to test my second point, my second value, f prime of two. And so I evaluate my derivative there for positive two. And we are again interested in seeing, do I have a positive value or negative value come out of this? And so when I actually calculate this value here of doing the order of operations, squaring the two, give me four times the three is 12 but minus 24, I'm already negative 12, plus nine, still negative. So again, I don't care what the actual value is, just in fact that it is negative. And believe it or not, if you had picked 1.5, which is also in this interval, or 2.99, which is also in this interval, no matter what value you pick between one and three, you're guaranteed to get that negative here. So these red test values are merely just values that you are free to pick in so long as they're there in that interval. And then last, we will pick the five and we will decide here whether it's positive or negative when I evaluate the derivative at five. And I have here three times five squared minus 12 times five plus nine. And again, I just need to worry about if this is positive or negative. And when I calculate here in this value, I should get, and in fact I do, get a positive value here. Now, this is just scratch work that's here to confirm positive or negative in our sign chart that's um, displayed here. So now we have to make sense of this sign chart. Well, we know what this is telling us is in this first derivative, in this interval, the first derivative, I should say, is positive, and then it changes to negative. And that change happens at one. So just like we were exploring in the Desmos graph, we see here the slope of the tangent line is going from positive to negative. Therefore, it must mean that at one, where that change happens, I have in fact a derivative that is zero, which we do, because that's what we got when we were solving for that derivative equal to zero. And because I'm going from a slope of the tangent line from positive to negative, it confirms yet again that this one is in fact a maximum value. So now we know from here, I have a max occurring, and in fact, technically speaking, a local max. And moving on to the three, what we're most interested in is deciding whether this three is in fact a local minimum. Well, I see just before it in this interval from one to three, the slope of the tangent line is negative. 
it then changes to positive. So I go from a slope of the tangent line from negative to positive, and that change happens at three. So if I have a slope that of the tangent line that's negative back to positive, and that change happens at three, it confirms for us logically that three must represent a minimum value. Okay, again, we can confirm that also on the graph, but here's an algebraic approach called the first derivative test that allows us to explore. So if we kind of put all this together, we now know that here x is equal to one, we decided was our, let's call it our local max. And over here, x equals three, based on the sign chart, we decided would be our local minimum value. Okay. And in order to figure out the actual full point for this, we know x is equal to one, but what is the y value? All we would need to do is evaluate the original function at those two x's, uh, x values. So let's do that just so that we can have a complete point here. So in the first one, I'm going all the way back to the original function because I want to know what is the output value associated to that input value of one. So I have f of one is equal to one cubed and then minus six times one squared plus nine times one plus five. And when I simplify here, I'm gonna have one cubed is just one. Here, one squared is just one, but minus times a negative six. So I have one minus six, so I have negative five, um, but plus nine plus five, that gives me a total of just nine. Okay, so now I know at least if f of one equals nine, then I know I have a, as we said over here, local max occurring at x equals one. So we have a local max at specifically the point one comma nine. Okay, and then lastly, we would do the same process for x equals three. So we have f of three is equal to three cubed minus six times three squared plus nine times three plus five. And I just need to calculate all of these values. And when I do, let's see, I get 27. Here, I'm gonna have three squared nine, but times a negative six, so negative 54. And then plus a 27 and plus a five. And this gives you just five. Okay. All right, so now we have a local minimum, because we decided that x equals three is a local minimum. We have a local minimum specifically at the point three comma five. Okay. All right, so that is the complete first derivative test for us for optimization. Thanks for joining us. I hope this video was helpful. Please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.